right. We're live. Good morning. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to today's event. Let's get loud. It is a busy event. Lots of guests uh, around. Uh, we're going to show a lot of cool stuff today. Um, but I just want to start with, you know, quick introductions to like, you know, what everybody, who everybody is. My name is Paulus Schoutse. I'm the founder of Home Assistant. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much, uh, I run Home Assistant nowadays, uh, or build, work on Home Assistant, work a bit on ESP Home, ESP Web Tools, other stuff. Yeah, Marcel? Marcel van der it's a it's a real Dutch name. Um, I'm actually contributing to the Home Assistant project for a while now. Uh, the latest uh, bits have been uh, the, the, the new U integration, the V2 integration for U and the C-Wave, yes. And I've been working on a little uh, pet project of mine since about three years now. Um, it's called Music Assistant. Music Assistant is uh, a bit related for, uh, so let's get loud, huh? So that's why I'm, uh, I'm in this chat, it's nice. Oliver? Hi, so I'm Oliver. Uh, I'm based in France, Paris, and my company is Raspi Audio. And so we make products uh, to develop audio creativity. So for the do it yourself space based on Raspberry Pi or recently on ESP32. And that's why I'm here today. Uh, hello, GC here um, from ESP Home, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's get started. So, yeah, today let's get loud. Jesse, Oliver, Marcel. Um, it's going to be cool. We have like a lot of different things that we're going to show, kind of how it all ties together. Uh, but before we start, I kind of want to just like, you know, talk about why we are hosting such an event under Home Assistant and ESP Home. Um, and, you know, how we kind of organize all this. So Home Assistant is open source home automation. ESP Home is open source microcontroller uh, creation. So you can configure your microcontrollers easily integrated into Home Assistant or with other projects. And, you know, Home Assistant and ESP Home are free. You can install it for free, use it for free. And, you know, the community worldwide is using this. Uh, home Assistant has like half a million installations worldwide is our current estimate. And... Basically, you know, at some point, Home Assistant ESP Home, it got so big that we realized that we couldn't run this project anymore in our spare time outside of our side jobs. So I created Nabucasa. Nabucasa is a company that exists to maintain and fund the development of both Home Assistant and ESP Home and other related projects uh, like in the open home. So it's our vision to create like, a, you know, your smart home where all your data stays local. You don't have to throw things out. It is reliable. And so with Nabucasa, we offer a cloud subscription that will add some features to your home assistant and then in proxy also to ESP Home. It will help you uh, have a better smart home, but it will also you know, fund the development. So that's basically uh, how we're able to like work on this and like work with other groups, support their uh, work as well to create all these cool projects for everybody. Now, if you wanna stay up to date what we are doing, what like, the smart home community is doing all that stuff. We have a newsletter nowadays, building the open home. You can subscribe to it by going to homeassistant.io slash newsletter, or uh, just go to homeassistant.io. There's a link on the front page as well. So without further ado, let's you know get started. So the problem we're trying to look at today is that modern audio systems, they're too coupled, basically, if you buy a smart speaker today, then everything is in one box, right? This means that, for example, you have, uh, you know, you have an app or your phone and that's where you pick your music. And then that app is from this vendor that made the smart speaker. You have your smart speaker, you have the amplifiers in that speaker, the Wi-Fi connection is in that speaker and the speaker is in that speaker. And the problem with that is that it's instant vendor lock-in. If we look at back in the days where we came from with audio, in my parents' house, I had something like this, right? You had 
every piece of your audio in your home was from a could be from a different vendor as long as like it was passing out audio signals it would work so in this case what we're seeing here is that you know you have the amplifier at the bottom this there's a, ca uh, a cassette deck player in the middle which outputs audio which goes to the amplifier the amplifier can you know change the bass the balance all that stuff and then forward it to speakers and all these three products can be of different vendors now today that is the complete opposite and coupling like i get it why people will go for it because it's very convenient instead of having to buy like four or five different audio products you only buy one and that one product it just works out of the box you don't have to do anything else however the moment you want more you have two options one is to replace like you cannot upgrade individual components so you would have to take the device and either buy the more expensive version or you go to a different vendor but you know at some point you have four or five speakers of one vendor and then it makes more sense you know that you're locked in you want to stick with that vendor and all of a sudden you're spending a lot of money on a lot of duplicate functionality that you know is all tied to these individual speakers and the worst thing is is that if one part of such a speaker dies the whole product is useless. So if it loses its internet connection and you can no longer like stream music from the cloud, well then that speaker might just be useless because my, maybe it doesn't have an audio in it even. So when we look at the smart home, there are a couple of things that we want from speakers, right? We want a local API. So we wanna be able to talk with the speaker. We wanna be able to integrate it into the rest of the smart home. Because, for example, maybe you want to play tunes in the morning when you wake up to like gradually wake you up in the morning. Or maybe when you arrive home from work, you want to play your favorite tunes. So your smart home should be able to know what's playing and be able to start playing stuff. Now, the second thing, there should be no cloud necessary, right? Of course, there are music sources that rely on the cloud like Spotify or something. But you shouldn't have to like talk to the cloud to have your media player operate, right? It should be able to work completely offline. Like it should also not be necessary. You get an audio stream, you turn it into an audio signal for your speakers, the speaker plays it. There shouldn't be any cloud. Now the third thing we want is grouping. We want to be able to have multiple speakers in multiple rooms play the same audio at the exact same time. This is awesome because then you walk through the house if you have a bigger party or if you have multiple speakers in the same room, you want it all to like work together and the last thing we really want is announce support and with announce support we mean that sometimes you want your smart home wants you to tell you something well if your music is playing you might not hear any notification sound so announce support means that like we want the volume to go slightly lower or the music to pause for a second play a notification sound or a notification song and after that go back and play its old music that it was playing before now if we look at the audio stack, kind of like break it down, what like these smart speakers do nowadays, we kind of get to like this breakdown. You have media sources. This can be Spotify. It can be MP3s that you have stored locally on a server. Maybe it's internet radio, like you're listening to the BBC, or it's a text-to-speech announcement. Now, these media sources, be it internet radio or albums or songs or playlists, they are all added to a queue. This queue basically is in what order are we going to play this media? Play song one, we play song two, maybe play a whole playlist, and the whole playlist, each item of the playlist is added to the queue. The next step is like the actual player. Are we currently playing, being able to seek through media, skip media? The fourth part is where this digital audio stream is converted into an audio signal that speakers can play. And then the last part is the speaker, right? It actually speaks. So when we look at this audio stack, we don't want to have all these five boxes in one product. We want to have individual products that do one or two of these pieces and the other things they do not, because that way you can upgrade individual things. Now, if you look at what I've, the picture I've put under the create output signal, it, the, the black disc, this is a Chromecast audio. This was really one of the best things that was there for the smart home, um, but sadly it was killed. 
The reason it was so good is because the biggest challenge we have with creating smart audio gear or audio gear for the smart home is media sources. Where do you get your songs from? Because a lot of us nowadays subscribe to music services, but the problem with a music service is that it needs to support outputting in your format or to your target. And if that doesn't work, it, you know, you cannot play it. So the cast protocol or is great because Spotify supported it and a lot of other media players, basically all media players on and the or music services that were on Android support the Chromecast audio. Sadly, uh, Google, uh, this wasn't like part of where they, the things they wanted to build. So they killed it, uh, which is too bad. Now we're here today, not to talk about like the Chromecast audio, but we're here to talk about, can we do better? Can we actually get some of those boxes we just solved where the audio stack is built up? Can we, do we have solutions for those different parts? And so the first uh, person I'm gonna, uh, that's gonna talk now is Marcel, um, who built something very cool. Hi guys. Um, I'm gonna show you my little pet project I've been working on. It's called Music Assistant. The, the, the name is not a real surprise. Um, it, it's an extension for a home assistant to uh, fulfill a few of, of the pieces Partis just showed us. Um, most important is, um, I have my home, I bought some, some Google Chrome uh, speakers, I bought some Sonos speakers, I bought some, some different brands, and um, I had some music files on, on, a, on a NAS. And then we got something like, like Spotify, and I was like, oh, ah, now I need a, a, an app for Spotify, I need another app to control some of the speakers, and another app for some of it all. And that's when I started exploring solutions that could control it all. And I have a little uh, goal set in mind to automate the, the, the music control in my home. So I was like, I walk in the kitchen, the music uh, turns on in the kitchen, it, it plays the, the favorite play playlist belonging to that uh, part of the day. And that's when a music assistant was born. And I've been working on it for like uh, three years now. Um, it got a, a little bit stalled because um, I was uh, yeah, like creating a, a very large uh, part of it with, with the speaker support. And that's when, when I realized oh, I'm, I'm also working on Home Assistant and Home Assistant has all these media player support already supported. It has Google Chromecast audio, it has DLNA. And that's when I, I was chatting with partners, I guess, half a year ago or something. I bought a said something like, hey, why don't you combine stuff? Why don't you try, you, you're trying to build a complete media service solution. Uh, why don't you focus on the, on the media distribution? And we, um, integrated with with home assistant and that's when um yeah things got flying and um maybe partners can can then uh, go to the next uh, next slide yeah <laughs> it has a few features and um i will make my my, my talk short because uh, this this is all theory this is all uh, plain text on the screen um i'm just going to show it later um I have a few features in mind that's, uh, that's actually set for, for today. Um, you want multiple music sources, but because today we have Spotify, maybe we have some high res collection on Cobus or Tidal or any other uh, music uh, service. We have some MP3 files maybe, or FLAC files on a disc. Um, we have multiple speaker ecosystems, um, just because we don't want to lock in, in, in one uh, um, uh, brand. Uh, Sonos is very nice if you have Sonos and, and Spotify, but you're locked into the Sonos ecosystem. So I can't buy another brand and add it to the to that stack. I want uh, I want full control of that stack, and I want full automation support. I want to automate my home with music. I want to select auto select the, the correct playlist. I want announcement support, and. And just another goal I've set for myself was uh, I don't need another media server. Um, if you look around, there's, a, there's one project that's, that, that stands up uh, against everything that's Logitech Media Server. It has been around for like 30 years, 25 years, I don't know. And one day I thought, oh, maybe I can contribute to that. And then I opened the source code like, oh, th this is like 25 year old code. I don't understand it. <laughs> so that's, that's the part. Uh, 
I decided to to go write it in Python because yeah, Python is a, is a is a language I know about and uh, easy to and to understand with uh, with uh, Home Assistant. So one of the key features is actually a feature. It has no uh, separate media server. It's just um, it's just an integration for Home Assistant. No add-on, no special hardware needed. Just Home Assistant. Uh, next slide. Uh, I was clicking on the screen, man. <laughs> <laughs> so just a, just a small animation of what's possible. In Home Assistant, you have various media player, player support already, uh, like Sonos, like EOS, like Google Cast, um, and, and the Squeezebox Slim Proto has been uh, contributed last month. Um, and there's, there's even more to come because we didn't explore every single media player integration yet. Um, but if the media player supports play to URL, so you can stream a, a, um, yeah, a plain URL to, uh, to it, it is supported by Music Assistant. And I will show you later how that's, uh, how that's, uh, that's working. Yeah, just a little screenshot. I, I think the screenshot is lame. I think we, we need to show the, the real product. <laughs> it's just yeah, a we're gonna, <laughs> we're, we're gonna show a music assistant demo at uh, at the end. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. Um, well, today's um, today's event is uh, for me. Um, it's a milestone because it's it's the date I'm going to launch this this music assistant. Yeah, it's not ready in my head, and in my head it needs a, a, a few steps more because. But the MVP and the minimal viable uh, version of it is ready for today, and um, we will show you later how to install and how, what you what you need to do to configure. But if you install today, and we will launch the the official stable version today. Um, it has Spotify integration, it has Cobras for high-res uh, music streaming, it has TuneIn for radio, it has local uh, file support like MP3s, file, FLAC files, um, and, and any home assistant media source you might have. Um, like I said, a media player is support that supports play URL, so uh, DLNA. Uh, it, it's, it's integrated in many receiver brands, for example, that just works. Sonos, Google Cast, some popular brands just work out of the box. Uh, another nice feature, maybe uh, for the more uh, audio-minded uh, people, is it's, it supports true gapless, and that's a bonus. Um, uh, Crossfade support, volume normalization support, it's all uh, integrated um, because the queue is streamed. It's, it's maybe a bit technical information, but um, Music Assistant creates one big audio stream of your music. Um, um, Bit perfect, yeah. So there's no quality loss or something, and that's streamed to the to the to the player. And that's the uh, the alert feature, the announce feature. We're gonna show you. It's really nice. You may have seen it in the latest Home Assistant release. The announcement support was added. It was a little toggle announce support. Um, it's actually included because of the the Music Assistant project. Because yeah, we had like this cool feature and. There was no configuration for it in, in Home Assistant, so it was added. And I think the Sonos integration also included it. I, I'm not sure, but yeah. I think there was another. It was broken. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I, I it, think there was an integration music, also included there. Yeah. Only Music Assistant does it announce right now, yeah. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> um, and all functionality can already be controlled from automations. I will share some. Uh, some automations with you later on, on GitHub or something of, or on the forums because I made some, some pretty cool blueprints to control every aspect like, like volume control, like uh, motion music and, and stuff. And uh, another little bonus feature uh, created was uh, you can create, create groups from different speaker brands um, with a music assistant or with a home assistant helper. You can create a group, add some speakers to it and play the music. And this time, this audio is not synchronized uh, because, it's, it's, yeah, there are different uh, speaker brands. But an, an, uh, an, a small feature upgrade will be if the speaker supports 
perfect sync, yeah, uh, supports a reliable um, time sync, we will try to make them sync together. So like Squeeze Light and Sonos, the, there's a possibility we can sync them together because they uh, have accurate timestamp support. Okay, um, still in the, in the theory, we have some planned improvements I want to share with you. Uh, I think YouTube Music, uh, we have like 350 beta testers last month. It was like crazy. It was like we, we did a silent release without any notification. We just put it on, on uh, AAC, what's it called? Hex, Hux? Hex. Hux, Hex. And uh, there are 350 uh, people uh, beta testing and YouTube music has been the most requested feature. So I think that will, uh, will be uh, included into the feature pack. And Tidal and Deezer support will also be added because um, I've created a, um, a really flexible model for the music provider. So Spotify, Cobas are added. But it's really easy to uh, integrate another music provider if you know Know, know how to talk with the music provider. They, they have an API. It's really easy to uh, to add another one. Uh, something else that's been requested a lot, um, connect to network drive or cloud drives directly. Many people have um, music on their disk, but there are also many people that say, yeah, but, but my music is on a NAS somewhere else from Home Assistant, or I'm planning to move my music away from my home and in and, and Google uh, Drive or, or OneDrive. So an idea is to have it included uh, in Music Assistant and let Music Assistant connect to the network drive directly. Oh, yeah. One cool thing there is that because Music Assistant supports all the media sources in Home Assistant, we have a DLNA media source that can put any DLNA server already in Music Assistant. Uh, Volumio, yeah. I think, is also directly integrated into Music Assistant and because it's a media source. So a bunch of the stuff, of course, I think already works as well. I, I, I was watching the comments and I see Apple Music. Apple Music has, has been a request. I don't think Apple Music is, all, we are allowed to talk to the API of Apple Music, but if, the, if there's a possibility, we can include it. But they need to be, and they have a, a public API. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, and one thing I'm to, I want to mention is iron out some compatibility issues because AirPlay, for example, that's a, that's another big play. It is not yet working, but I'm pretty sure if we work together, we iron out the, the latest bits, we can make AirPlay work. So an Apple TV or an AirPlay speaker is, is possible to, uh, uh, to uh, yeah, integrate with a music assistant. I mean, it's been, very, it's been very interesting as Marcel has been really pushing the the media players to its limits in home assistant and like we've been like finding a ton of like incompatibility issues and tweaks that we could do to make everything better um and add some new features also to make sure music assistant has all the you know controls it needs yeah, yeah. so i'm pretty sure if we go live today today with the with the new stable version there will be some more uh, players report that's working or non-working or maybe with a small touch I remember last week I've been busy with the DLNA support and I had some a little magic, what's it called? Diddle package or something. Uh, and then that made it work. And, uh, and I'm pretty sure that's, uh, that's with, uh, with other me uh, media players too. So another sheet I want to tell you, I was, I was talking with Frank. I think two two weeks ago, I said, I installed Music Assistant, but what's the benefit for me? Because I already have a Sonos speaker and Spotify. I said, there's no benefit because if you just have a Sonos speaker and, and a Spotify, I can't do better than that. Uh, that's, a, that's a real polished app and uh, they made sure the Spotify integration is, uh, is all set. A music Assistant is really for the power users, really for their home assistant and to, and to just uh, people that like to have multiple speaker brands or like to have multiple music sources, bind that together, automate it. Um, it's not going to compete with those uh, all-in-one packages like Sonos because they do a really good job. But this is like integrating multiple uh, parts of it uh, together. So I want to be clear, um, if you're looking for an alternative for your already working Sonos speaker, whether Spotify uh, um, integration uh, include 
I think music assistants can do that, but I don't know if it's going to be a benefit for you. I mean, the, you know, the, I think, you know, where music assistant shines is choice, right? Choose your yeah. media sources, choose the players you use, choose anything of the stack, right? If you find, you know, if people are fine with a vendor lock in a single speaker, then, you know, that should be, that's their choice. Then of course that will work great, but you're also limited to their design choices of how the things look in your living room, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. Yeah. Um, another one, eh? if you have a Bluetooth speaker and, and, and you just cast with your, with your phone, well, that's also sound, but that's not music in my ear. So it's like music assistant is for good quality sound. I make sure that uh, there's no quality losses. Um, and um, yeah, you, you need to be a, a bit of a music fan or an audio fan for it, uh, for it to, to, uh, to take the step, to take the plunge of, of configuring it. And it's, it's, but I think this will be nice. Yeah. Right, so as Marcel was working on like Music Assistant, we realized that, well, you need a media player that can play an audio stream. And only media players that can play audio streams are the ones that generally are those all-in-one boxes, you know, you know, like uh, Sonos or Google Cast can play audio streams. So we were like, how can we make this more accessible? Because we want to have, you know, Music Assistant be able to play on any speaker. And so, that's when we like you know, connected with Oliver from Raspi Audio because he actually makes hardware, well, the name already gives it away, for Raspberry Pi, but he has recently ventured into a new segue, which is the ESP32 based products. And of course the ESP32 based products shine because they are relatively affordable. So that gives us a great uh, way of like, you know, creating these speakers that can play music anywhere in your house. And to talk more about this is the man himself, Oliver. There you go. Hi, thanks, Boris. Um, so maybe I will just introduce myself and Raspi Audio um, first. So we are a team of five people. We are based in France. And basically, we, we are making audio product to develop uh, audio creativity for people. So as you said, we started with um, um, Raspberry Pi Shields. So we have all the different kinds of Raspberry Pi Shields with microphones, speakers, uh, standard line output. And recently, I mean, two years ago, actually, we have started, um, we wanted to start a new line of product based on ESP32. So we have today two products. Um, the first one is this one. So you can see on the screen, it's a yellow card. We call it the Proto Board. So Wait, Oliver, I'm going to make it a little bigger. I'm going to... Yeah, it's too small. All right. There you go. Yeah. All right. It's fine. <laughs> so we have this board, which is called the Proto Board. So this is basically what you want if you want to build your own speaker by yourself. So connecting... Uh, uh, and we will see that uh, later. So because we are going to build a smart speaker today in five minutes. So... <laughs> And then the second product we have with the ESP32 is, let's say, the Lux ESP32 Muse Lux. Uh, so let's say you will buy this product if you don't want to do anything on the hardware side. You just basically plug the USB cable, download your, uh, upload your uh, firmware, and you're done, you're set. So it's very accessible. And if you don't want to mess with wire and stuff like this. Uh, so maybe you could come back to the presentation quickly. Yeah, thank you. And so we have all kind of different other product. We have the, a new line of product that will arrive uh, in July, which is a product which is based on Raspberry Pico. So very affordable, but of course it has no wireless connectivity. So this is from very specific applications. And we have another line which is called Modulox. This is for DJs. Uh, they want to mess up with MIDI, and basically these are building blocks that you could uh, uh, snap together like magnets. All right, so this is Raspi Audio, uh, and maybe you can go to the next slide. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to explain quickly the methodology we used to build this, because this is kind of special, and I never had the occasion to present it. 
So I'm quite proud of it. Um, it all came with the idea that we, the, the industry today uh, is wasting a lot and uh, that we could make new products by reusing the industry leftovers. So we created a, uh, a movement, we could say, uh, some kind of design movement called the cuckoo, cuckoo design. Because the cuckoo, you can see on the screen here, it's a bird uh, that does not own its own nest. Basically, instead of that, is using the, the other bird nest. So we do the same with the factories. Uh, this Lux casing is actually an outdated speaker casing from a 2018 um, product. So I have contacted the factory and I say, okay, what if uh, I take everything, uh, your mold, your, your spare parts, your process of assembly, and I'm just making one PCB, one electronic board that will come in the product and offer new capabilities for it. Um, and everything stays the same for them, you know, for, for the production plan, all tool was reused. And for the user, us, for you watching, you have a new product in a very short time at a very competitive price. Uh, so you save resources and you upcycle uh, something from the industry, you know. I hope that was clear. And so now, next, next slide, please, please. Yes. So right now, I'm going to show you how you could make a smart speaker for a very, very affordable price. So this, this speaker you see here, this is what you could, I, I paid, I think, $5 for both of them. So it's a second hand speaker and you could do, and you could do two smart speakers with it. Uh, adding this board here, here, the raspberry, um, the proto board and a battery. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing to do is of course to uh, upload the firmware inside the ESP2, ESP32. So I will, maybe you could share, oh, well, it's too big. Tick, tick, tick. Could you share, uh, yeah, this screen, perfect, You're fast. And if I go in full mode screen, full screen mode, I'm not sure it's working. So uh, what you will need to do, you will go, you don't need to install any software. You will go to this web address, raspiojo.github.io, and from there, you will select as a device you want to select. Uh, right now we are working with this board, the proto board, and we'll click on connect. Could you see the screen when I'm going in full screen mode? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Um, from there you will select the COM port. So the COM port, well, the definition is not so great. No, it's... So the COM port to communicate with it. So it's called CP1 something. Then you will click on install. Sorry, sorry. And install. And then it will go and from a Chrome browser. So you don't need to install any specific software it will uh, install the firmware. I will pass till we go there, yeah. So right now, uh, the firmware is inside, right? So we need uh, now to connect on the hotspot that was created. So the hotspot is called squeeze light and the password is squeeze light. So it connect to the, to the hotspot. The purpose of connecting to the hotspot is to set the credentials. So then you, type, you go on your local network and you type the IP address 192.168.4.1 and you will set up your home Wi-Fi. So you click on scan. Good, so quality is good now. Click on scan uh, and you will see a list of all your home network 
My own network is called VM, and I will enter the password. All right. And I click on join. So at that point, your device, your board is connected to your local network. So you need to find what is the IP address on your network. What, what is the IP address that your router gave to the device? Uh, in this sentence, so I click on logs and I could see the logs. And I will find the IP address, which is here 192, 168, 195. And I connect it to it. So at that point, that's it. You're done. Your uh, your device, your board is programmed, and is visible on your local network. So it could be detected um, by home assistant, for example. So I will I will. Go to the other camera quickly. Here you are. So, well, you know, one, one second, Oliver, because like yes. this firmware you just installed, this is special yes. firmware called Squeeze Light ESP32, Correct. which is it's an open source project. And this project, it is actually so it speaks a slim proto protocol, which is you know compatible with Home Assistant, but it also allows you to be an AirPlay target for Apple devices. And I think you can Bluetooth to it as well. Correct. You can AirPlay and Bluetooth. Yeah. So it, it, it all it can do all these different protocols just in a single box. Right. Yeah. Um, that's it. So now we have this board. Um, so this board has an integrated amplifier, uh, 3.5 watts. So it's enough to produce a decent sound uh, at home. So. The only thing I will do is connect the two wire in this passive speaker. Yeah. Up, we're done. Uh, connect the battery to it. Be careful of the polarity. All right. Uh, and I will glue it this way and this way and turn it. On. You can see the blue light, I guess. Yes. And now I will stream some media to it. Uh, we put a radio. Hopefully. It's not connected yet. Well, you can stream any media, our radio to it, right? Because we'll get like, a copyright there. Oh, all right. Thanks for signaling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So here, so if this, if if you cannot recognize the song, I think it's okay, right? Right. Uh, so basically, we have a speaker, which now it's working. Um, it's a smart speaker, and we did it in five minutes. So we we'll turn right. off, turn it off, so we don't get sued. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I hope uh, it was useful. And uh, that's it. So, I mean, you're, you're selling these products, right? On your website? Yes, I'm selling this that? product on raspiaudio.com and Amazon as well. You, can you mention the prices? Oh, for sure. Um, the small board, the yellow board to make the, the do-it-yourself board, they call it, uh, is $24 only. <laughs> and I will put myself uh, in the screen, yeah. And this one is only 49, 49.90 um, on Amazon. Yeah. So, and, and that's a good thing with the SP32 uh, compared with um, Raspberry Pi. Uh, we can make um, more affordable products for sure. And especially no day with a shortage of uh, Raspberry Pi. Cool. Thank you so much. Then, uh, but now, of course, you've noticed Jesse is also here, ESP Home. And so now, you know, ESP Home, of course, is a bit more for the tinkerers, right? What Oliver just showed is really a, you buy this product, 
you go online, you install it, um, and it just works. You connect it to a speaker. Now, of course, with ESP Home, you generally get dev boards, you add sensors to it, um, install ESP Home, it will show up in Home Assistant. You know, you don't have to program, but you need to, you know, do some YAML configuration. Um, but not that much more. We actually made it very simple. I, mean, I say we, but Jesse made it really, really simple now in this release that ESP Home that went out yesterday. And uh, well, here's Jesse to talk about it. Yeah, hello. Um, so basically, I guess even before I saw it, you know, the, the code that I put in there actually came from Marcel as well, because he was playing with it first, um, creating a custom component for ESP Home. So I took that, um, made it a bit more ESP Homey, and integrated it in to the main code base. Um, this allows yeah for the tinkerers so what we've got what what i've been testing on is this uh one second i'm gonna make yeah. you the big <laughs> there we go so this is the m5 stack atom speaker kit um and also well so they've got two there's the, the speaker kit which is this size and the echo which is even smaller um Basically, they both they both have a built-in speaker. Um, so for both of them, well, this one, you know, external speaker, external speaker here, but it also has a 3.5 millimeter jack, which you can plug into any other speaker, um, giving you limitless opportunities there. Um, but with ESP Home installed onto that, um, we can then connected to Home Assistant via yeah, the, the native API. Um, and there's a banana yeah, to scale. Please really don't know what, yeah. what size my hands are. <laughs> yeah. um, I, and the Echo development kit, isn't it like two and a half by two and a half centimeter or something? Uh, I think they're, they're 24 by 24 millimeters in right. terms of width. Um, the height is not much more, not very high. So yeah, it's, you know, you just plug this into any USB port that you've got. And you've got a uh, very nice little announcement speaker. It, it plays music. They're not great because of the, the size of the speaker and the power. But um, if you have text to speech from Home Assistant, then let's get loud with Home Assistant. I don't know if you can hear that in the stream. I don't know which. Yeah, I think my microphone is on the camera. But um, yeah, but you can. Kids, it is now time for breakfast. Come to the table, please. Yeah, you can litter these throughout your house and they're not too expensive. I can't remember the exact price of them. Um, so the, I, I looked at the price just now. The, the Echo Smart Speaker, the small white one, uh, they're selling those for $13.5. And, .5. and uh, the speaker kit is $22. Yeah. So, so M M5 are... Tech also sells things like battery packs. So you can actually plug a battery pack into the end and have the whole thing portable with like a USB port on the other end for charging as well. So it's actually really cool. So these are the, you know, if you want music, definitely go for recipe audio stuff, right? This, this is really yeah. meant for the, for notifications. Like this is the, the speakers are not meant for like nice audio quality. Maybe, maybe yeah, shower and so the shower it maybe. <laughs> yeah, and another thing with these is, and they they can't run Squeeze Light, and the issue, the reason behind that is because they don't have the the extra memory available to run the full Squeeze Light firmware, um, and they can you cannot fit that that SP thirty two into this the size. It just it doesn't physically fit with the extra RAM. Um, so yeah, anything music based, you're going to need something like the Raspberry Audio, the the Muse Proto, or the Muse Lux. Um, but yeah, these are very, these would be very great to just put around the house for, for audio, uh, text to speech audio. Yeah. I'm definitely going to put and, these and, around my house. Just yeah. For the and kids. they still have pins. So there's pins on the bottom. Um, it's a sort of a standard pin set that, uh, M5 stack have created. Turn around this way. Um, and all of these are the same. So there's like the, the echo itself is this on the speaker kit is the Atom itself, same same pin out on the bottom. Um, and yeah, you can, I think it's got I2C 
um, exposed there, but in general, any pin, you can use them for anything else. Um, yeah, it's a, quite a cool little ecosystem the M5 stack have created, allowing to have speakers and yeah, many other things. All right. Uh, Frank, Frank also asked a question, what is the, the echo and the speaker kit in terms of volume? Um, they're very comparable. The speaker kit is a little bit louder because the speaker is actually external to the case, I think. Um, but you can plug into it as well. Um, I, although the audio quality isn't great with external, with my external speakers, I found. I don't know why. Um, yeah. So... Um. Well, so to make it easier to run ESP Home on these products off the shelf, like if you saw on the last slide, the I2S, I2S audio media player, well, you need to put some YAML, you need to configure it. But of yeah. course, we're like, these, these M5 stack bar things, they work out of the box. You wouldn't need to configure it if we already pre-configure it. So today we're also launching a new website which is a website where I'm just going to quickly share this. I was just bringing it up, but you probably get it faster with the right screen size. So this is, uh, <laughs> where's my screen here? So this is a new website. Uh, it's a, this is what I get for doing things on the fly. So yeah. this new website, it's uh, espihome.github.io slash media players. It shows a couple of products that we have created configuration for that are ready to may be installed. So this also uses ESP web tools, just like the recipe audio stuff. You can select the Muse products here, but we already, as you can see over here, we really tell you, unless you're going to tinker with like other ESP home features on the Muse, we definitely recommend to use a squeeze light because it actually uses all the different audio capabilities and the RAM that these products offer. Basically, if you have any of these speakers, you select them, you hit connect, uh, you pick a port, and then you connect, you install just as you're used to uh, from the ESP web tools. So this firmware will be updated automatically. It is, of course, you know, um, you just install it and it will work right away with Home Assistant. You will configure it through the website using improv connected to Wi-Fi. And then you can actually use the ESP Home dashboard to later customize it or update it to later versions, et cetera, et cetera. So it's going to be uh, really sweet. So yeah, if you want to get started with media players, be it Raspberry Audio, be it ESP Home, you don't actually have to know how to program or code or do any of these like, you know, solar, right? Like the, the most difficult <laughs> part recipe audio connecting the terminal the, the two wires between the proto board and the speaker so that is like uh, the, the most difficult part all the other part software installation should just be uh, straightforward yeah um, yeah so that the ESP home upgrade is really cool because I think that we will be able to see more supported boards in the future the future that also have audio stuff and then you know, it's, it streams the URL, which, you know, music assistant streams URLs, right? So it, it could theoretically play, uh, you know, music. Yeah. Assistant. I mean, I've, I've been testing them, these, these little ones with music assistant as well, and it works. The, the audio quality is not great because of the, the speakers and everything, but yeah, it works. I can yeah. create a so, oh, music. Uh, I see people saying which website so let me the website is esphome.github.io slash media players we will also uh link this it's already linked in the release notes of esp home and we will also uh well it's, uh, it's also on the slide that i'm not showing right now Frank, put um, it in the comments oh yeah yeah so yeah this is the the url Cool. Well, then we are getting to the last part. Uh, let me first hide Frank because it's showing on top of Oliver. Um, <laughs> it's demo time. Marcel, are you ready? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I'm just going to quickly mess with all this. Um, I don't know if you can see my um, camera too because I've gathered some, some speakers around the house, put them here behind me. 
So that's like a, a, a squeeze light speaker in there, a Google Home with Sonos. There's everything um, over there. I want to show you the, um, yeah, the flexibility of music assistant. My screen is also shared. So we're kind of limited to the music we want to share. I'm, I'm already forgotten what's what's it called, but I have it in the queue loaded, so it should be fine, I guess. Um, so I selected a few of the media players from Home Assistant into uh, Music Assistant. I will show you the process very quickly. <clears throat> it starts like here. Um, you select your existing media players from Home Assistant. We filter this a bit. Um, we try to detect if the media player supports uh, play to uh, play me play media, but it it's not waterproof. For example, the the AirPlay uh, media player comes through. You, it, it is selectable here, but it won't work. Um, we're working on that. We're working on getting every uh, media player compatible or ignore it in this list. So you can uh, uh, file a GitHub issue if you uh, uh, have a player that player that's not compatible. Basically, it's it's just like this. And you select which players you want. Um, these players will be hidden by default in the interface, and that's because otherwise you will have two uh, players of the same. I will show you later uh, what the, what's that look like. Um, well, they are hidden because Music Assistant creates new virtual media players for yeah. you, right? You will still yeah. see them in your interface, but the old ones are not visible by default. Um, in the past month, when uh, we were running the beta, there were a few questions about that. It's because Music Assistant uh, adds uh, features on top of the media player. So you can have a very plain, simple uh, media player in Home Assistant that can only have a, a volume control, for example, and, and play media. But with Music Assistant, you have a cue control and you have mute, mute support, and it, it adds all kinds of support. So. It's outputted as a, as a new uh, media player. Um, well, in, in the same setup set, uh, you have um, the possibility to select music providers. I've selected all that support it, like covers and um, some, some music locations. Um, you can actually stop the media players from being hidden if you want. Um, I wouldn't recommend it because you will have the duplicate players for everything. You will be confused. Uh, so here you can see these are media players. For example, uh, this Google Home Mini. That's also that's for in the Google Cast integration. So it duplicates the, the media players, but it hides them, the original, the source players from the from the interface to not get you confused. It's still there. It's still controllable. You can still um, go to this uh, to this configuration screen, and um, I'm, I think it's was this one. You can see here it's hidden. The players you selected will be integrated into Music Assistant. This is the player menu of uh, a Music Assistant. Uh, it auto detects any group. Players. So, for example, I've created this cast group. It's a Google cast group with a, a few players in it. Um, it lists them, so you can have the volume sliders in, in top of the uh, in top of the, the group. And you can play music to the entire group. Now, I don't know if we're actually going to hear something. There's music. I don't know if you can hear it. Just yes. that's music here. Yeah. Um, and this now, time, this, Marcel, yeah. this is playing uh, on the. Is this playing on multiple speakers right now? Yeah. Can you show this on the music board how this looks? I know you made a special dashboard for the. Yeah. So they're like the multiple speakers. The. I'm going to put the volume a bit down. <laughs> This is also integrated, so if you have multiple speakers, um, it will uh, control the grouped volume. So for example, if you turn one off, you can still control the volume of the other ones. I don't know if you can see this, but it's, it's like a grouped control. Um, 
The bad thing about the, the um, copyright free music that we are playing now is that it doesn't have any cover art. So the, the, the pictures here are a bit boring. And uh, normally you will see the cover art there, the, 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 the media images. But uh, the copyright free music we are allowed to stream here in this, uh, in this live stream uh, doesn't have any cover art. So that's, that's yeah, a bit of a shame. Um, what I want to show you too is this one. So this was, this was Google Cast. It was in fact a Google Cast group. We also have um, a speaker I've built myself. I don't know if you can see this is a very cheap um, a speaker, active speaker you can buy on, on like Amazon or eBay. It's, I think it's like $15 or something. And you can add a small um, um, audio device in it. So you can actually integrate the, the, the recipe audio device in there. You just open the, the, the box. There's five volts already in there. It's just connected to the speaker terminal. And I've added a small uh, rotary encoder. It's for my kids. I've built uh, such a speaker for, uh, for uh, each of my kids. So they can click music. They can select their own playlist or volume controls. Very easy. And it's easy to build yourself. It's like the Sonoro. Um, and this is the, the recipe Audi, the, the Muse looks um, with ESP Home. So I just wanted to show you that it's possible to uh, stream music on it. I don't know if you can hear it. This one is running ESP Home right now with, uh, with Music Assistant. There's still a, a, a small bug in here. And you can see the, the time is not uh, counting. It's, it's like last minute. It was like an hour ago that, that we finished this. <laughs> yes. It's like live demos. And uh, still uh, some issues in there. Um, but just to show you how it works, yeah, you can control all these, these different brands of speakers um, in one interface. You can browse the interface. You can favorite your, uh, your albums or I don't know. Um, Um, and the another one, this was also a nice one. We've created a helper group uh, from Home Assistant with multiple media players. You can put different brands of speakers in there. You can play music to it. Uh, another demo I want to show you is this one. Um, yeah, that's the, this one, the text-to-speech. Oh, I think the volume is very. It does actually volume level. So um, if the volume is outputted at, uh, at some level, it will uh, output the alert message, the announcement a bit higher. But it was like zero at this time. No, that's, that's zero uh, with nothing. I don't know if this is. Uh, this one is not a... <laughs> ah, too bad. <laughs> I like the, I like demos, right? So, what's oh, that's supposed to happen? Out now. <laughs> right. What's supposed to happen here, and you know, it has worked yeah. in other media players. That this is a test. Music oh, it's, it's working now. Music, working, yeah. We'll play an <laughs> announcement tune and then read the message, the speak to text to speak message, on a higher volume then return to the, the music it was playing and resume playing that. Yeah, except the speaker I just I just tried doesn't work. But um, it, it should work like this, like um, broadcast a TTS message yeah, with a, a bit of increased volume and then resume the queue uh, again. Yeah. It's now resuming this works, the queue. By the way, so this is not limited to text-to-speech in Home Assistant. We in te the text-to-speech through the media browser will automatically add announce equals true to it but you can actually use it with other like any music url you can shoot at it and music assistant will like play it as soon as possible and then uh, like an alarm do some, uh, mp3 or something yeah this one this was added recently uh, in preparation of music assistant you can now have some, you have some MQ options. So 
if you want, if you, for example, uh, put the, the Spotify URL here, uh, you can play it or unqueue it. And this one is for the broadcast of the announcement. So you can uh, use a pre-recorded uh, voice message or some, I don't know, or some, some car horn uh, sound or something like that. It will, if, you, if you select the announce flag, it will play that announcement and resume the queue again. Um, he also show, can you show the queuing options inside Music Assistant? Just when yeah. you pick a song. Yeah, for example, uh, I, 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 can I show uh, music here or are we only yeah, allowed? Yeah, you can show, show pictures. It's just the, the bots uh, find uh, audio. Uh, uh, now, for example, I show some Queen album. I look at it. Um, here you can see what's happening when I have multiple music providers. So. I can show where is this music coming from. This was from the file system, in fact. And then I can enqueue it. And this time I click right, this. So all the, the music you're browsing in, uh, in Music Assistant is combined from all the different music sources at once, right? So you see local, you see Spotify, your tune-in radios. It's all together. Yeah. Yeah, for example, the radio stations for... Uh, this is TuneIn, TuneIn Radio. It will default to your, to your favorite radio stations. So if you have a TuneIn account uh, and you favorite some radio stations, it will auto-list them here. Um, I see, I was uh, looking at the comment. Do you need to Spotify API client secret? No, you need to username and password. Uh, music assistance is based around LibrePods. Libre, LibrePods. I don't know the English pronunciation for that. Yeah. But <laughs> it's an open source uh, Spotify integration. Um, but you will uh, need a premium Spotify. You cannot use uh, no, a free Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. Um, playlist support. You can actually add uh, uh, stuff to playlists. You can. There's a nice bonus in here. Um, you can add music from different providers to a file system playlist. So you can have an M3U playlist and you can add Spotify songs to it. So you can have a, a, a one playlist to, with both Spotify and file system um, songs in there. Um, I don't know what else to show. This is a bit of a Just test you click and then... the play button because then it will show you the different options of how to play it. Maybe that's... Uh... Oh nice yes, that's right. I just pick one of these, uh, one of these uh, albums. This is my test machine. I don't know, don't even know what the music music is here. Uh, this is the enqueuing. So if you play an album or an artist or a song or a playlist, you can you can choose how to play that. If you want to play it now, it, it starts playing that 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 cue. Um, or next, if, if a song is already playing and you want the next song to be this song or this album, you choose to play next or just enqueue it. And if your queue is, is already on shuffle, it will auto shuffle the songs um, that's, that, that was already in there. So if you have an, already a queue with some songs in it and you add some more and some more and some more, it will keep shuffling. So you, you can have uh, like five playlists, shuffle them. And you have one randomized uh, playlist if the shuffle is enabled. Um, and it results in a queue. This is the queue for each player has a queue with songs uh, that are queued. I think this, this is familiar for people uh, who are used to the, these kind of systems with uh, and queues. Um, you can also uh, change the order of, uh, of songs in the queue. And you have some settings like the shuffle control. Uh, if the repeat is off or a single track or the entire queue, uh, volume normalization. I I think it's uh, volume normalization is really cool, especially when you have multiple music sources, which are all mastered on different uh, different levels. If you enable vo volume normalization, uh, the volume will be leveled to the same uh, level. Um, it will be a little bit a little more quiet. So you have to turn your volume a, a bit up, but that's because you have to create a baseline for volume. I think it's even nice. For example, in my home situation, I have this I have this set at uh, like min 23 because the alert sounds will 
be a lot a, a lot uh, harder uh, because the alert size will be leveled at uh, at zero dBs, and this will be leveled at a little bit below that. So the, the alert messages, the announcements will be uh, very clear to hear, and you can even uh, enable cross fading for for all the, the these players. This is a bit of the advanced section. Um, this is the, the default section. Just just put it on smart. It will cross fade whenever possible without any quality loss. And uh, if the sample rate, oh, this is also a bit a bit more advanced. If the sample rate it doesn't match for, between two sounds, it will restart the queue with the other sample rate. So if you are not an audio audio file or something, you can turn it like this because that will um, resample all audio. If you really have really good good ears, you might be able to hear that, but it shouldn't be. Um, I don't know what else to show. There, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of uh, to demonstrate. It. Um, I think it's good if people just try it out and, and tell me uh, what's working, what's not working. Uh, it's the first version. Hey, I, I will put the release button <laughs> later today. There might be bugs in there, but uh, we'll try to fix them as, as soon as possible. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marcel. Cool. Then, you know, I want to do like some quick Q&A because I've seen a couple of questions come by in the comments um, and I'm just going to like shoot them at like the whole view. So, Oliver, some people have been asking about stock. Like, stock, they go yes. to Amazon. Recipe audio, and they're like, okay, when can I buy this? It's out of stock. Uh, first, it's, uh, it was in stock this afternoon, I think. <laughs> so, um, in the USA, you, you should have some stock uh, in the next couple of days. It's difficult to know uh, because it's uh, it's already process. It's in the in the process at Amazon, so it should be ready in two two days something. Uh, in in Europe, this is a bit different. In Europe, you will need to wait uh, another month, I'm afraid, for the Muse. Uh, Lux lacks this one. But for this one, uh, the small one, the, the proto board, the, 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 ye the yellow one here, then you should have some stock in both countries, in Europe and USA, um, in the next week, I think. Next week. Cool. Yeah, very cool. Then uh, one of the questions I saw coming around, like, okay, we see like you can play it on Google Castify, this means Google Home. Can we play this on Amazon? And the answer is no, Amazon does not currently support an open standard to play URLs, but there is hope because Amazon is um, adding support for Matter. And as part of the Matter specification, Amazon is working on a music streaming support in matter where basically we can send you guess it a url to play so if everything works out this is a lot of ifs 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 we should be able to start sending urls to amazon in the future if the amazon speakers are part of our matter network so that's this, there's no timeline on this like it's not even part of the official matter spec 1.0 i think maybe it is i don't know but um, it definitely, I, I don't know when it comes, but it will eventually come. But yeah, until then, uh, Amazon speakers are a closed ecosystem. Um, another question that uh, we actually mentioned, but we keep uh, keep seeing being asked, uh, Marcel, are the different brands playing in sync when you play a group? Not yet, not yet. Yeah, if you are in luck. Jesse was uh, was like, uh, "Wow, it's it's, it's it's a perfect thing yeah. when you have all um, the all the same hardware devices and you play." <laughs> yes, the audio is released at exactly the same time, and it is not kept in sync. And the device needs to needs to um, give a signal back to music assistant. Hey, I've just played this PCM for PCM frame, and then music assistant, if it has accurate timing info and it has info about the latency. It can tell players, oh, you need to pause for a bit and you need to pause for a bit. It's actually on our to-do list. Uh, we wanted to have it ready today with the, with the Slim Proto integration because it has all parts already there and ESP Home should be possible too. 
but um, yeah, time was not our friend. It was uh, there was too 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 less of it. <laughs> it will be there, and but for example, don't expect a, a Google Cast speaker to be in perfect sync with an ESP home device or something. It will be started at the same time, so it will more or less play in sync. It will not be perfect sync because the Google Cast speaker will never uh, share the accurate timing info uh, with us. It will it will be close. Close enough, I think, for the for the non audiophile uh, listener, or or if the speakers are not in the same room. So, for example, I have a, a, a group myself here for for upstairs and, and downstairs. They're playing the same music, but I can't hear that there is a half a second uh, of difference between them because they're not in the same room. So, get a house with many floors is the solution for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it will be very cool to fix. That, that's for sure. Yeah. It will be very cool to fix. So we could do a. I, I know, there's some questions here. Plans to make it work with Plex. I think Plex already supports playing URLs. I don't think Plex is a media source itself. Plex servers expose themselves as DLNA servers. So if you use the DLNA integration in Home Assistant, you should be able to stream from Plex to Music Assistant or even from Plex directly to squeeze light or ESP home, but then you don't get the queuing system. So it's not less uh, useful. Um, this one is for you, Jesse, supported DAX. Uh, I'm not much of an audio person myself, so I can't exactly answer it. Um, but if it does support the I2S audio, um, it will most likely work. Um, we found that with the Muse Lux, there was a bit of extra setup because the, the DAC chip or the codec uses I2C, like uses another setup protocol as well. Um, but a lot of them, I think, will just work out of the box unless it's a special one, um, as long as it's it's an I2, I2S based audio board chip. Cool. Robin is asking, what about Rune compatible speakers? Are they supported and in sync? I think those are Slim Proto, right? No, Rune supports Slim Proto speakers. They they have uh, ah, Rune okay. is also a media server, but they have their own their own proprietary protocol. I don't think they're ever gonna share that. Ooh, for proprietary protocols. Yeah. Um cool. Well then. I kind of want to wrap up here, I think. Uh, I'm just going to add this to the stream just as like uh, uh, this has been, uh, this is going to be the last slide, just an overview of all the things we've presented today. So Music Assistant, brand new integration. Today is 1.0 launch uh, created by Marcel. Music Assistant is a custom component installed through uh, the Home Assistant Community Store. So, um, and this allows you to create uh, a music stream from different music sources, Spotify, local media, radio, stream it to any media player that supports playing a URL, including popular players like Google Cast, um, but also uh, Raspi Audio, Squeeze Light uh, products, or uh, ESP Home. Now, Raspi Audio talked today about their two products uh, based on the ESP32, the ESP Muse Proto and the ESP Muse Lux. The Proto is really cool to connect to your own uh, speaker, so basically get like an old speaker at the second hand store, make it smart. The Muse Lux is actually out of the box, just uh, it works. So that's really cool, small little speaker that will greatly integrate with Home Assistant. But because of the Squeeze Light ESP32 API, you can also Bluetooth to it or use AirPlay. So there's a lot of options with the Raspberry Audio uh, boards. And then ESP Home also has media player support, so you can connect any DAC to the ESP32 and with ESP Home, configure it in a way that it is worked straight up in Home Assistant with uh, any media source. And then, of course, we are also now offering ready-made firmwares for popular media player boards that are basically ready to use uh, at home. So, like you know, we showed uh, whatever this the, the speaker kit and. Uh, but of course, it also works with the Raspi Audio products, but they are, uh, we definitely recommend to put squeeze light on it because you get so much more. It's better yeah, quality. Another one. Squeeze light has, uh, has um, um, uh, 
the, the ESP home is limited to MP3. It's it's it's, it's missing the PS RAM, so it's like uh, uh, it's like um, some some a bit bad quality. It's for TTS. It's it's, it's right, but not for music. It's with like a yeah. full option. It's uh, uh, yeah quality. Yeah, if you if you get a board that has the PS RAM, like the the ESP32 uh, Rover. I believe it is then um it could be activated and the sp home could then stream the the flag urls but music assistant will specifically not send it to an sp home device right now because we have no way of seeing which ones are supported but um yeah we could do that in the future if we want to add that support as well so like one of the boards that i first bought and tested was this one it's just a a cheap one from aliexpress um and that works fine. There's just a, an I2S DAC output board, and it has a jack, a 3.5 millimeter jack on it, so you can just plug it into any speaker. Right. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks everybody for watching today. Um, I hope you have uh, a lot of new stuff to play with, either today or whenever the Muse is back in stock, <laughs> or whatever your AliExpress order ship. Um, Definitely try out Music Assistant. Let us know uh, in the comments whether you like it or not. Definitely don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to the Home Assistant newsletter. We're going to like, we'll obviously, we're always working with different people in the community. Today's audio, maybe next week it's something else. So definitely, if you want to stay in the loop, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, subscribe to our newsletter. Um, yeah. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. Bye. Thanks for watching.